Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. And first of all, I would like to apologise that this video was up late. I know it was meant to be up yesterday, but there were some things that happened, got in the way, and just completely out of my control. So without any further ado, let's just get straight into the free practice and onto the track acclimatisation. Okay guys, so here we are on our track acclimatisation. Now, those of you who have watched before know that this isn't really a strong track for me, but I've got to say, I think this definitely helped me out in the race today. The fact that I got on this track acclimatisation, got a couple of those corners that I was really terrible at, sorted out, got my braking point sorted out, got my tyre management sorted out, but it, it took a while for me to get used to it all. So here we go with our first of three laps. And you can see I really slowed down way too early for that corner just to try and make it. Getting the DRS, get the speed up. Now one of those corners that I really hate is towards the end of the track, sort of where it joined us in. I always seem to keep on spinning out at. I think I left that in the video for you to see when I spun out. Uh, I definitely I spun out once or twice in the game on that corner. This is another one I keep going really wide at sometimes. I just can't control it. Sometimes it's the breaking point, sometimes it's just where I'm positioned and when I start to turn, but I just don't get it at all. I'm always good at this part here. And it's up here, I always seem to spin out. And it's because of that curb. You always have to get right up on that curb. You want to go as fast as you can, but if you keep that throttle down while riding that curb, you just spin out. I think I'll do it on the next lap. See, I got the corner right that time. Probably not perfect, but it was it was good enough to please me. For you, those of you who don't know, I actually do record the F1 videos about a week in advance. So, it's pretty much as soon as I'm done with this voiceover, I'll be recording the next one. So I do forget quite a lot from the time that I record it to the time that I do the voiceover. Because it's, I usually do the voiceover the day before I upload it which is exactly what's going on here and this is exactly what I was on about where I just lose that corner and you can feel it even with a controller you can feel it start to go not to give up on you and there's nothing you can do about it yeah as I was saying uh, I'm recording this literally the day before it goes up, so I am recording this on the day it's supposed to come out, the voiceover that is, but the other one, uh, next week's one will be recorded immediately after, so by the time I come around to recording that, the voiceover on Saturday, I've completely forgotten almost, because of all the other videos that I've got to do, I've got the MotoGP to do now. Uh, which I know there was meant to be two of last week, uh, but I just there were other stuff that got in the way, and I I just couldn't put it on hold. Well, 
looks like we're coming for an all purple lap here. Be good if we could. I don't think we are. This lap's looking yeah no. Part nine is a is a green. Uh, this is probably the closest we're ever gonna get for a while to an all purple track acclimatization. Now I'm not a master of editing like Tim at Marduk or Arava are but you know, I'm doing my best. I'm still trying to bring these F1 videos out for you, and that's the main thing. Now, we haven't got long left for my 20 subscriber goal, and we haven't gained any subscribers, so I need your guys' opinion down below. What do you want me to do in order to get you to subscribe? Because I know there are a few of you watching that are not subscribing, and those of you that are watching, or probably only watching five minutes of a half hour video or if it's a 15 minute video you're probably watching like two or three minutes of it and then you're skipping out of it what do you guys want to see for me uh, from me in order to gain your subscriptions and to keep you guys in because I'm trying to do the best I can here it's, it's by no means easy and I'm putting my all into this. It doesn't cost a penny to subscribe, it doesn't cost you a single penny to drop a like or leave a comment. I'm not trying to beg you for money. I mean, there is a Patreon link down below if you want to support that. There is a donations page for anyone who doesn't want to pay the, um, the Patreon fees, which I know for some people that the Patreon, even the cheaper one at £5 can be expensive so if you want to drop 50p or a pound you know, there's a PayPal donations link in the description of most of my videos for anyone who just wants to help out I'm not trying to beg anyone for money if you want to help out you're completely free to do so and it's better me having the links rather than getting the comments of oh where do you want a donation or do you want me to send you any money that way you can just donate even anonymously if you want to so it looks like we're in our tire wear here I wasn't actually paying attention to what one we were on coming on to but I think this is the um, tire wear and as you can see that corner is really bad for tires and that entire section there is really bad for tires I don't think there's a single part of this where we do get a purple lap in I think we just manage a green one here and that's about it we managed the pace well that lap and tire wear is more or less as expected tires really do take a battering around this track. It's not a very easy track to manage tires with. I don't even know if it's possible to get a purple lap for tire wear on this. Especially if you're running with ABS. I mean, some of these corners you just can't help but lock up the wheels if you haven't got the ABS on. I don't know how some YouTubers manage to do it. I see a lot of people racing the F1 on YouTube with zero assists whatsoever and they're not locking up the tyres around the corners where I would which is nearly all of the corners honestly 
but it looks like we're going to actually get a purple on this one. Which I'm very surprised about. Here was me saying I don't think it was possible. But we'll head back to the garage and we'll see what the next stage is for us. So it's going to be the fuel management. Now I don't do the ERS management because I don't run with ERS. I use uh, the auto, the automatic ERS. So we're going to stick on some mediums and go out on a flying lap and see what we can get for fuel management again I don't think I can't remember I'm probably going to end up saying sound like a complete fool if I say I don't think we get a purple I don't think it's possible to get a purple especially after that last bit so I can't remember if we got a purple lap for the fuel management but I don't think we did the only way we can find out is if we just go and do a lap or three I think if I remember correctly I think the first lap is invalid because of our target lap time was under what it needed to be it was a case of trying to keep a fast lap and keep the fuel in the green which is quite difficult on this track I'm pretty sure the first lap is invalid for whatever reason it was it was either the not hitting the correct fuel management or uh, there's an invalidated lap anyway for exceeding the track limits So that pretty much cancels this lap out. Alright, okay, so here we go on lap two. No we to on so we'll need to see how much better we do on this lap. Hopefully it's quite a bit better. But I'm going to say it now as well. Um, if you do enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up. Please hit subscribe. And please, if you want to, share this video video and my channel with your friends and your family. So as you can see we are starting to get a little bit better around this track. Hopefully that's going to help us out in qualifying as well, help us try and reach. I think the goal is, um, I think our contract goal the second place in pole, uh, second place for qualifying. So we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, we manage to reach that in the qualifying section. So I'm not going to bore you with any of the qualifying pace or the race strategy as soon as we're done with this lap we're going to jump straight into the qualifying unless I see that the next lap gives us a purple lap which I highly doubt it was me forgetting the DRS until halfway down ok guys so here we are at the end of practice and we've got the interview here so uh, I can't even remember what I went for uh, yeah let's just go with that and again we're going to have to promote the aero team here as well So with that being out of the way, let's get straight into the qualifying section. Immediately after upgrading some more components. So 
we do need to work on quite a few areas. We don't need to, but we're going to. So I think we're going to start with some chassis or I think we do a little bit of I think we do decide this chassis, I might be wrong here nope we're going with durability so let's get straight into qualifying qualifying is nearly upon us and the drivers look as if they're all geared up to go I expect we'll be getting underway very shortly Right, so there's no goals or anything, just basically put on the fastest tyre available, which is the softs, and head straight out onto the track, try and set a nice fast lap time. Want to try and hit at least position two. I don't think we'll be able to, but it's worth a shot. You never know. Stranger miracles have happened, as they say. So I'm just doing a quick check of all our components before we go. Turn on to the start finish straight. And let's put in our first lap of qualifying. And we come up to that corner that I really don't like. But We've managed it very well. And I can see a driver in front of us, I can't see who it is. But let's just try and keep up with them. I think it might be Carlos Sainz. It is indeed, it is Carlos Sainz. So. Let's just try and see if we can get past him. We don't want to be as far back as he is in the lineup. I do want to try and be in the sort of top eight, I would have thought. That would probably be the best option for us. About top eight. Again, just letting the throttle off on that corner. I don't want any any more spin outs on that corner. It's bad enough that we already had the one in free practice. I say one, the one that you guys saw. I did do it again in race strategy and I think I've done it in the qualifying pace as well. And oh, we've actually managed to get pole position, but I don't think that'll last to the end of the end of the session. I think that's just because we're one of the first out on track. Um, uh, certainly maintaining a pretty good delta. I say that and it goes red. So we're going to have to make this lap count, try and get a even faster lap time because I seriously don't think that pole position is going to stay there for much longer. I reckon Hamilton's going to come out and set an even faster lap time than that. But we have got a positive delta which is good. We're nearly a second up. I think so anyway. I mean, I'm only seeing this from a very small screen. It really cuts it down. Yeah, for 0.7 up. Okay, you're in the top 10. So we're just going to go back to the garage. Put some more fuel in. Maybe put a first set of tyres on. But we'll see how close people are coming. 
Uh, Sebastian Vettel is getting really close to beating us. But we're one one hundredth off of the theoretical best. Theoretical best is five eight six, we're five eight seven, and we actually managed to maintain pole position without having to go out. Well then, so we're starting off in first place. That's certainly gonna be a it's gonna make the race a lot easier, I think. Being up at the top, being right at the very front, as long as we get into that first corner, I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great race for us. And as long as they just keep battling behind us, it should be fine. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you with this. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Starting at the front with Devon alongside must bring back some memories from F2. Appreciate your time.